Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stampin' Up! with Jamie. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, if you're catching this on replay, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get my computer up and running here so I can follow along with comments. I also want to pin a post, which is something I've never done before. So let's see if I can do it. Um, give me a second here. Um, let's see. Hold on, bear with me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wait, come back, come back. Oh, maybe I can't. Please review. Hmm. Okay, I was trying to pin something, and I really honestly don't know how to do it. It made, I Googled it, and it made it sound really easy, like I just have to, like, hit a button. But now that I'm doing it, I'm not... Oh, there we go. Pin comment. I guess I had to do it for my phone. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. I'm trying out something new here with a pinned uh, comment on my post today. Uh, today, I'm playing with uh, something kind of fun, really uh, new and, and unique and special that Stampin' Up! is doing right now. Um, right now, they have um, uh, shared uh, Share Sunshine PDF Download. Uh, that you can purchase, anyone can purchase right now. It's a PDF with really, really fun, cute sentiments, uh, phrases. Um, some are just straight up like thank yous to healthcare workers and whatnot, and others are um, more uh, punny and cute and funny. Uh, and all proceeds go to uh, two, you can pick between two organizations that are helping with the COVID-19 relief. Um, those are the World Health Organization COVID Solidarity Response Fund. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. And the other one is the United Way Worldwide's COVID-19 Community Response and Recovery Fund. <laughs> okay, so all proceeds that um, come from the PDF download will go, you can choose where you want them to go, 100% of the proceeds. Um, it's $12 to download the PDF. And it's great because you can um, print them right off your printer, off your computer or device, and uh, use it for memory. I just can't wait to use it for scrapbooking because I definitely think this needs to be documented in my kids' scrapbooks. Um, so my sentiments that I'm pulling today come from there, come from this PDF. The first one I'm using says, just feeling the need to reach out and, crosses out the word hug, and wrote, writes, send a card to someone. And the other one is I totally share my toilet paper with you. <laughs> so really fun. Um, I wanted for my face mask here to use the one that says I'm smiling under this face mask. Uh, but it was a really big sentiment and I, my face mask kind of takes up the whole card and I wanted something a little smaller. Um, but definitely really fun one. And I like the, I think this is funny. No saliva was used on this envelope. Um, so really clever uh, funny different scripts and it is printable so they have like a black version and then they have a uh, most of them come in other versions that have other colors um, and then on the pdf it explains what colors were used what coordinating dyes you can use for each of the sentiments um, and it's just a great way to kind of give back to supporting organizations that are helping as well as just sending a timely card to someone right now. So kind of taking advantage, making the most of the situation and uh, sending cards. I can't wait to pop these in the mail and um, hopefully give someone a smile on their face. Uh, I'm gonna start with, so I'm making two. I normally don't do two, but I figure maybe we have some extra time on our hands and um, I don't think they're gonna take too, too long. That's why I'm doing two. So my first one here actually makes a face mask. This isn't unique to me. I saw this, a couple other demonstrators making face masks uh, using paper, and so I thought it was very clever. I don't know who to give credit to because um, as I was searching, a couple of different demonstrators were doing this, so I honestly don't know who did it first and who had the idea first, uh, but I will say that it's not original to me. Um, I thought it was a very clever idea, and so I decided to make it for you tonight. So let's start with this card here. Oh, I didn't. I need my scoreboard. Okay, so let me just score this quickly. Sorry, I forgot to score it ahead of time, although we are going to need this the, to score lots of things tonight. 
So this is Purple Posy. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Keep in mind with Purple Posy, it was supposed to be an ink, well, it was an ink color from last year. It is still current, the cardstock. However, the ink um, was a little funky. They were having a hard time getting a good, clear result from it, one that would um, kind of stand to the test of Stampin' Up's uh, quality control, and it didn't. So we can still get the cardstock. The colors will be in designer series paper that are in the new annual catalog. We just can't order ink. So just keep that in mind. I then cut a four and a quarter by five and a half, another uh, purple posy. And uh, this one I embossed using my absolute favorite. I think I use it all the time. You guys have to be sick of it. <laughs> Subtle embossing folder. I wanted, um, because there's a, this is a sort of busy designer series paper, I wanted something that would add a little texture to the card, but not be overpowering. So that was sort of my um, theory behind that. And I'm going to tear that down. Good, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. If you're watching and would like a chance to earn, earn one of the cards uh, tonight, be sure to leave a comment. Because at the end, I'll go ahead and draw a name for someone to receive tonight's card. Okay, so that's kind of our card base. I'm going to set that aside. We'll come back to it later. Next, you're going to need a piece of designer series paper. I'm using the best dressed one. I'm not using the shoe side. I'm using the floral side. And obviously, I pulled the purple posy. That was my inspiration. That's why I picked that. And uh, I cut this at three and a quarter by four. Three and a quarter by four. That's kind of our starting point. And I will caveat this by saying that I made this card and then realized I never wrote down my original dimensions, my original, um, yeah, measurements, not dimensions, measurements. And uh, so I'm hoping this is right. So if it's not, I'm going to may have to tweak that. But as of right now, we are at three and a quarter by four. Okay, you're going to need your score. Highly recommend this. And uh, something to keep in mind is you're going to have to be flip-flopping. So I'm going to try and go slow so you know which side to score. Okay, let me get this out of the way. So I'm butting it up right into the corner of my scoreboard. And the first measurement we're going to score at is three quarters. Okay. Let's call this my floral side. So floral side is three quarters. Then I'm going to flip it over to the shoe side and score at seven eighths. Okay. Then I'm going to flip it back to my floral side and score at one and five eighths. I'm going to flip my shoe side and score at one and three quarters. I'm going to flip it back to my floral side, score at two and a half. And last one, flip it back. You're going to score at two and a half. I wrote that wrong on my sheet of paper. Uh, two and five eighths. I purposely wrote down all the dimensions on a little cheat sheet here. And of course, I didn't write that one right. So again, you're basically scoring... Um, three quarters in and then one right next to it and then three quarters one right next to it three quarters one right next to it you have to alternate though in order to get the folds to fold easily now they're very subtle oh there you go i guess the lighting picks them up but they're there now you kind of have to uh, maneuver the paper gently because the score lines are so close i'm gonna start this way the score lines are so close to each other that um, they almost want to just cr become one fold. So I kind of like am pushing both my hands in, kind of making the scores a little bit more pronounced. And then as soon as I can kind of get them to go, I slowly and gently, so it's not even like a hard one yet. I'm not really pushing. I'm just kind of guiding the paper to, to fold, to Z, I guess. And then when I have a good line, I'm going to use my bone folder and really create a marked line. But I don't just go to that. So for the middle one here again, I'm going to kind of 
push ever so like this one is pushing this in and this one is pushing from the top so it kind of z's on me and i'm just trying to find that groove it takes a little bit and then as you start to find it you can kind of really kind of fold it even more so and then as soon as you kind of get that fold beautiful you can come in with the bone folder and really crease it nicely and then the last one i have a feeling hold on i'm going to do that one one more time because my very first one i did i didn't really push that hard and you almost feel like you're going to rip the paper but you won't well i suppose you could <laughs> but um hold on this way Ooh, make sure make sure you fold them the same way or else your face mask is going to be kind of one pleat is going to be going one way and then the other pleat is going to go another way okay and then when you feel like you can kind of without it turning on itself so to speak there we go then come in with the bold folder and really crease it nicely okay we have the pleat and i guess i kind of wanted the the face mask to kind of bubble a little bit in the middle so just kind of i didn't do this on my sample because i thought it would just naturally happen but it didn't so I'm gonna kind of give the paper a little bit of a curve. Very, very subtle. It's, I don't know if that'll do it, but I kind of wanted to just kind of pucker a little bit, so to speak. Okay, so then let me show you my card. Then I created these seams. Oh, the light is so bright. There we go. Um, and first I just cut designer series. I mean, I just cut cardstock, just plain my cardstock. And then I thought, oh my goodness, we have all these stitched dies. I'm sure I can find one that can kind of give a stitched look. So I pulled the, where is it? The stitched nested dies labels. And sure enough, it has this one die in it that is just a straight stitch. So you're gonna need, um, it doesn't really matter length yet because we're gonna trim it down, but two, and let me just verify. It's gonna be a little, uh, I guess I need to trim this. It should be, should be just two and a half, but it's a little bit longer. So I did end up trimming it um, just an eighth. So this measures, it measures two and a quarter. You need a piece, oh, hold on, two and a quarter wide. Again, I apologize. Usually when I make cards, I don't keep track of de the measurements. And then um, sometimes when I'm doing my lives, I'm like, oh my goodness, what was that? <laughs> what was that measurement? I completely forget. Um, okay, so you need a piece of Whisper White that's two and a quarter. Don't worry about the length because we're going to trim it down. And what you're going to do is take that, this die here and just butt it up almost flush to the end of your whisper white run it through a die cutting machine i'm going to do it off camera here whoops oops <laughs> the magnetic plate might if you have one might be a little tricky just because the die is so it's just like one thin strip okay it doesn't cut it it just um, embosses like a stitched look into it. Then you're going to take your paper trimmer. Oops. And I'm measuring a quarter of an inch and then cutting. I could have just cut the quarter of an inch and then embossed it. Wow, that's so bright. There we go. Um, I don't know. I felt it was easier this way. So you need two of them. So you're going to do it again. You're, you're going to line it up right to the edge. You're going to run it through your die cutting machine. Oops. Hopefully nothing falls around you. Oh, you never knew it was there. Yeah, I used it once. I can't remember the card that I used it for, um, but it's kind of fun. So I have my stitched in there. Stitch. I'm going to measure a quarter. So it ends up being a quarter by two and a quarter. Right, that's two and a quarter. Yeah, so it ends up being a quarter by two and a quarter. I suppose you could just straight up cut it and then um, use that stitch die, but 
Either way, it kind of gets you the same results. Just <laughs> depends which one you want to do first. Uh, okay, so when I hear this down, I'm going to use my tear and tape because I love it. And it's perfect to hold down something with a little bit of oomph. And it's kind of hard because this is pleated. It's not something super flat. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure. So I'm going to put this straight up to the edge. Now I will say the tear and tape, as I'm putting it down, I'm kind of pushing on the pleat to make sure it's nice and flat because the pleat will kind of want to become elevated. There are my scissors. So I, I have it a little bit extra, a little long, no big deal. Just trim the edge and oops, did I drop it? No, it's stuck. Okay, let me do the other side. Where's my tape? I love this stuff. Hi, Christy. Oh, thank you. I normally don't <laughs> create cards like this, but I'm just so inspired by um, the PDF. So again, uh, the card I'm creating today uses sentiments. Well, a sentiment, but sentiments from a special PDF that Stampin' Up! is selling right now. It's called Share Sunshine PDF. It is a link to it is pinned to this video. You should see it in the comments. It's $12. It contains 15 pages of sentiments, a couple of images, but it's mostly sentiments. Um, and you print it. So it's a PDF file. You would download the PDF and then just print it. Uh, every sentiment comes in black and some of them are in multiple colors that can be printed. All the proceeds go to uh, two organizations that are working hard right now against the corona pandemic. So I peeled the tear and tape and I'm just going to adhere this down. So here's the thing about the tear and tape. It's ever so slightly longer. I don't know. Normally something like that would bother me, but it doesn't for some reason. I don't know why, um, but it doesn't. Maybe the coronavirus has made me a more chill crafter i don't know <laughs> okay so there's our mask it's kind of hard to see the pleats but it's there and again you can kind of open them up a little bit i don't know i kind of wanted them a little bit open up there we oh actually that kind of works if you kind of i feel like the camera's not doing it justice i wish you could all just be sitting next to me right now and we could be like crafting this together <laughs> it'd be so much more fun <laughs> Um, okay, so a face mask obviously needs um, whatever those are called, <laughs> something to go behind the ears. Now I'm using Whisper White Baker's Twine. It is on the retiring list. To be honest with you, I didn't check ahead of time to see if it was still available, but it's the only <laughs> Baker's Twine that would work. So um, if it's still available, make sure you get it. And if not, you can easily substitute another ribbon or another um, color baker's twine to work for this. Uh, I'm going to trim them down. Let's see if I can get a guesstimate at how long. It'll probably end up being, oh, maybe four inches, maybe three and a half. All I'm going to do is put a little adhesive on either side and eyeball it. Like so. I didn't want, I originally had them really big. And it was just too big. So I ended up pulling them off and making them smaller. Oops. Let's not get adhesive on my grid paper. <laughs> okay, this is my other one. Again, it's, you know, it's just all in good fun. I know there's a lot going on. I know a lot of people are suffering. Um, but I just feel like if a card could just bring a... It is sold out, Karen. Okay. Um, if a card can bring a smile to someone and just make their day, then by all means. And I'm all for supporting a cause that's helping the community. So, okay. So the sentiment I'm using, I guess I can show you these. Um, this is just half of one of the pages. And again, I think what I say, 15 pages. Yeah, 15 pages. Uh, I'm smiling under this mask, a face mask. I wanted to use this one, but it just was too big. I wonder if there's a way you could shrink it. I don't know. It was just too big. 
So I wanted a smaller sentiment. Uh, my hands miss feeling moisturized and my heart misses you. So funny. No saliva was used on this envelope. That one cracks me up. I'm sorry. Sending love and if I could toilet paper. Uh, I can't wait to social undistance with you. And then the one I'm using for this card, uh, just feeling the need to reach out and crosses out the hug, send a card to someone. So, whoops. I'm using, again, one of the stitched nested dies. This one is approximately one and a half by, oh, like two and five eighths or so. It fits beautifully. It's like the, it was made to be. Um, and off camera here, I'm just going to cut it out with my die cutting machine. Okay. And then we'll be just about done with this card. I do have two. The second one is super, super simple. We'll come together really quickly. So here's my card base. Again, purple posy. And I'm looking for them. I did adhere uh, dimension, dimensionals down in the corners. A, because I like to overlap the twine i feel like it holds them uh nice and sturdy in place and it just kind of helps the face mask be 3d but i am finding the more i kind of open it up it really does sort of pop in the middle my it's what i wanted for this one but i didn't really get that effect but i'm loving i kind of like the way this one looks even better i might pop that one off and redo it to be honest <laughs> okay take the dimensionals off Sarah said we can't alter them. Oh, okay. There you go. That makes sense. Karen's got my back tonight. Thank you, Karen. I'm sorry. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Karen's got my back. Okay. I'm putting it on an angle. This guy looks a little smaller than my other one. It wouldn't surprise me if the measurements are a little different. Like I said, when I made this one, I could not for the life of me remember the measurements. So I kind of just guessed. This one looks a little shorter. Yeah, it looks shorter. Um, so anyways, you can feel free to play with this man measurements, the, the face mask measurements. And then I have uh, my sentiment. I'm just, don't mind the back of it. I printed it and it printed bad. So I, I savaged the paper and just printed on the other side. Okay. This one I kind of have more straight on. And I like that I, um, it's the stitch, again, the stitch nested die. So it kind of coordinates with the, the stitching in the face mask. That totally looks crooked. Or is it just me? Can I pop it off? If you make um, some, if you put something down and you don't think it's straight, my advice is to um, pull out. Don't pull up. If you're trying to correct it, don't pull up. You'll pull the paper. Kind of pull horizontally. And um, you're better have luck to be able to um, fix it. Then I grabbed some pearls just to add a little bit more detail here. It's very subtle, but I don't know. Just a little detail. And that's that card. So my face mask. Super cute. I love it. I can't wait to pop that in the mail, honestly. So my second card is really fast. It's going to come together really quickly, I promise. Um, I would totally share my toilet paper with you. And I will say that one of the images, um, <laughs> I, iron I ironically, uh, my printer ran out of color ink. So my toilet paper, I went through with a marker and just traced it because it didn't print really well. But there is a really, um, there's a fun toilet paper image. Um, and then let's just roll with it. Super fun. You know me, I love my puns. I really just can't help myself. Oh, I just realized I never pulled out cardstock for that. Hold on. You're going to need a uh, petal pink. And it will be measuring four and a quarter by 11. Scored at five and a half. Sorry, I totally dropped the ball on that one. And I have a piece of lovely lipstick cardstock. Again, some of this... this product is retiring so i apologize i didn't check ahead of time to see what was available but you very easily can switch and swap in <laughs> designer series paper cardstock colors whatever it's just more or less just sharing a template with you so this is two yep two by five and a half just to add a little bit of texture again i, I embossed it with that same embossing folder the subtles embossing folder 
So ever so slightly adding a little bit of texture to it. Very subtle. And then I'm using this beautiful, fun banner. I love banners and I think that's super fun. You will have to fussy cut it out, but it will go fast because you can kind of, this is when I have something like a banner or something, I usually do the outline. Curve your edges. <laughs> Don't leave your edges pointy. That's just a pet peeve of mine, I guess. <laughs> Curve your edges. Also cut down your cardstock. If you're working with a huge piece of cardstock and you're trying to fussy cut a small detail, you're just gonna, it's gonna be harder. It'll work to your advantage if you trim it down a little bit. Oh, thank you. Karen, you're so on top of it tonight. Thank you. Well, and here's the thing. Next week, the video will go live, so I don't even know if it'll be <laughs> available next week. But again, these are just sort of template ideas. You can interchange designer series paper and, and cardstock and whatever. Then um, I come in and I go like this one way. I do all my one ways, flip it over, curve your edges, go in. I love this banner. I would love a die for this banner, hint, hint, to the powers that be. This side's a little more of a challenge, but you just gotta take your time. And I try to find design, a designer series paper that had black in it because I usually don't stamp in black unless there's black somewhere in it. Um, but I thought it popped nicely with the florals and although the black can be not so feminine, the other colors in the card and the florals certainly make it more of a feminine card. And I thought they worked nicely together. You keep your computer open when making cards to make sure the items haven't sold out. Here's the thing, you can make it today and then you go to post it tomorrow and it's like sold out and you're like, what? <laughs> it definitely gets a little tricky this time of the year. And I did have my design, designer series paper. Did I put it away? I think I put it away. Is it this guy? I did put it away. Oh boy. Um, so I used the rectangles stitch dies because I love stitching. And the rectangle measures three and five eighths by four. And I'm going to use dimensionals to adhere the banner down. Lots of them. <laughs> I love dimensionals. They have me at dimensionals. <laughs> that should be a stamp. <laughs> I would buy it. I'd buy that PDF. Okay, so here's the thing. You may naturally, like, I kind of want to do it that way, right? like my eye naturally wants to do that way but to make it straight on it's kind of slanted and then because why just do one dimensional when you can do lots of dimensionals I hope that's not too long Woo, that was barely if I had gone a smidge lower with that one it would have been too low I'd be reconfiguring <laughs> the card really quickly okay I got them all right uh, aim for straight and center. And then last but not least, again, because the other one I used pearls, I wanted just a little bit of a detail. I'm using Petal Pink Organdy Striped Ribbon. This ribbon is carrying over into the new an annual catalog, which is very exciting. I love this ribbon so, so much. Um, oh, I'm doing a fork bow. If you're not familiar with it, I've done it in other videos. <laughs> when he's the dimensionals are the bestest I agree they are the bestest I can't not use them I really try sometimes and I think I always use dimensionals on a card unless it's like a super simple stamping card why can't I get that in there super simple stamping but for the most part even on my simple cards I'll use a dimensional of some sort now if you aren't familiar with a fork bow, um, definitely go back and watch one of my other videos. I go through it a little bit slower. Me too, Heather. So pretty, right? I love that it's see-through. So it just, it's very feminine and delicate, I feel like. Okay, now I gotta make sure my tails are this, more or less the same size and they are. And I'm gonna use liquid glue. 
squirt some on there. I didn't grab a, let me grab a block. I wasn't stamping, so I didn't have a block ready. And then I'm gonna just put my bow there, put a block on it until it dries, and we're all done. Okay, so those are my two cards for tonight, my face mask, and then just kind of a fun, feminine, but kind of fun uh, card. Uh, definitely check out the Share Sunshine PDF. Again, it's $12. It's full of really cute, funny um, cards. Some are more sincere. Just thank you to our essential workers and for all they're doing for us. 100% of the of um, of it goes towards your choice between two organizations right now that are helping with COVID-19. The, the link is pinned to this post or it's also on my blog. You can check that out. Did I? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's pinned here so you can go over. You can't open, you can't preview it, um, but they do give like a, a couple of sneak peeks and they do make a couple cards with some of them. And it's fun. I, I can't wait to use it for memory keeping as well. Um, and I think it's very timely to send um, kind of these cards to bring a smile to someone's face and, and just kind of have um, fun in the midst of some hurt and um, struggles. So uh, be sure to check that out. If you haven't left a comment yet and you would like the chance to win one of these cards here, be still have time, leave a comment, and at the end I'll, I'll pick a name. Um, thank you everyone so, so much for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.